give in to your pride. Show me your greatness. Cyframes are a new deck out recently in the latest set High Speed Riders and hopefully by the end of this guide you'll have a better understanding of the deck, its synergy, its plates and also a rough deck list for yourself to take and use for your personal use and work on and see where you go from there. So Cyframes are an interesting deck and they're an interesting archetype and their mechanics are uh, pretty unique. They're probably one of the most reactive decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! probably ever made. Um, they rely on your opponent's plays to react and then establish dominance through out-resourcing and the grind game. And it's uh, surprisingly quite easy to get a uh, to get a hang of. Some of the advantages of the deck is that it can play some of the best draw cards in the game. Maxed out pot of duality card card is not something particularly unfamiliar that you'll find with this deck, and it pretty much doesn't suffer from the drawbacks of these cards in any shape or form. Actually, uh, unexperienced players as, as well, uh, obviously because it's a new deck and lesser players in general, are going to find that they're going to struggle quite significantly against this deck um, because it does severely punish bad players and people who don't really know how to play around certain cards that the deck has. It's got a lot of disposals, uh, sorry, it's got a lot of tools at its disposal as well in the form of the negations. So the way the deck works is that pretty much you can negate anything and everything with your hand traps uh, and you you find quickly that your synchro monsters as well, everything that the deck does can pretty much help you to deal with every sort of thing in, in the game. However, uh, it doesn't have particularly elaborate or over the top combos and plays. So you will find that while you can deal with certain problems, a lot of it might take your, might take a, lot, a little bit of setup and a little bit of pre-planning and coordination rather than being able to deal with everything all at once and OTK your opponent that turn. Another advantage, uh, Cyframes can run some of the best floodgates in the game, Macrocosmos, among many others in the side deck where you see fit. There's nothing that the de that really, really hurts the deck. Of course, except Mind Drain, I would not recommend signing that. And there are some drawbacks, of course, like any other deck. It's extremely reliant on your opponent's plays. So what you'll find is some people have decided to try and mix in your Senju's, uh, playing wind up rabbits etc to offset the reactive nature of the deck because if your opponent does nothing then you can find that you also will literally do nothing so it's finding that balance between offense and defense in the deck building that will help you perfect and make an extremely competitive deck so the deck itself runs primarily on the banish zone and through special summoning each gear or little monster uh, responds to a certain card used by our opponent you have a card that will respond to your opponent's spell, a trap, a summon, attack, or a monster effect. So the idea is that your opponent does something and you react to it, you special summon on their turn, and then you can synchro summon as well with the field spell. You can banish your opponent's cards slowly as well and out-resource them that way, uh, and then get back advantage by recycling your cards with things like the synchro monsters psychic, uh, and the psychic cards like Psychic Path and Psychic Field Zone. A lot of inexperienced players will use the Psy Frame Overload Trap non-stop and they will find themselves running low on resources early on so it's important to keep track of these things and make sure you don't just negate everything and anything at every opportunity. You should always make sure not to be too reactive and make sure that you negate the right thing at the right time and not to be too trigger happy with your monsters. Now each deck monster, as we said, negates something. The way this works is that you reveal the monster in your hand to negate then you can special summon itself and the vanilla monster uh, out of any zone, so from your hand, deck, or graveyard. So drawing the vanillas isn't really the end of the world, although you would prefer to bring them out of the deck, so that's why I would recommend playing two at most. Two is a good number. You kind of uh, need the second, but you probably don't want to clog your hand up with three. Anyway, like all other gears, uh, none of them can be special summoned or have their effects used if you control a monster. So this is why the deck can't run you know, a sort of offensive engine. And this is why it does take advantage of things like Card Card D and Wind Up Rabbit because you can clear your field quite easily on your opponent's turn in order to use your opponent's, uh, in order to use your gears from your hand. This helps you gain advantage and it puts pressure on your opponent while at the same time allowing you to play some actual monsters. Alpha uh, is the first card we'll look at and this is actually the only one in the deck that doesn't negate. 
Uh, it's more of a rota or a stratos. So when your opponent normals or specials, what you can do is that you special this out of your hand as well as the driver, the vanilla monster, out of your deck or hand, etc. And then you get a search. You can search for the Cyframe Trap, you can search for the Cyframe Field Spell, or other fuel for negation. Now some important things to note here mechanically is that when you reveal Alpha, for example, or a gear to negate, if your opponent mind crushes you, you won't actually get the negate. And also, another technical thing to mention is that Maxi allows you to only draw one card off the special summon. And while you might be confused as to why this is, because you are special summoning Alpha and then Driver, this actually happens at the same time and not in sequence, so you do only get one card. And that's pretty much all the ground rules for the Cyframes. Everything else from here is pretty much simple. They all do their all individual things. As long as you remember these basic things, the Minecraft ruling, the Maxi ruling, the reveal, and the special summon, and what each thing negates, you're pretty much good to go. The next one is uh, Beta. It's essentially a Swift Scarecrow. When your opponent declares a direct attack, you can special it as well as Driver. And like Alpha, it gives you level 7 access. Uh, with your synchro because all the little guys are tuners so you can make pretty much anything uh, between level 7 and 8 uh, and also if they try to replay the attack uh, you can go into a zeta with the field spell or if they've actually managed to set a lot of things from the previous turn etc you can also black rose them on your turn which is pretty cool next up we have delta uh, this one lets you negate spell cards as well now, probably the most important and notable thing you'll be doing with this card will be negating Mystical Space Typhoon. If you have Mistake, or Shadow Mirror, or Macro Cosmos, or something like that, some kind of field spell, uh, you can protect your Floodgates, or even just protect your trap and field spells in general, uh, from being MST'd, because it negates any spell card. So if they try to Ritual Summon with Necros, or Shadow Fusion, etc., uh, you can get rid of this guy from your hand and negate the summon. And if you've got the field spell up, Synchro on their turn. The next one is Gamma, uh, and it does all the same as the other monsters uh, in exactly the same way mechanically, except this one lets you negate monster effects. Now, this is a monster that a lot of people can get really, really trigger happy with. So you gotta make sure that when you're using Gamma, you're negating the right thing. Don't just drop it on a Manju or Senju as soon as it, like, it hits the field. Like You probably wanna try save it for when things get really hairy, like a trash or something like that. And you gotta make sure that you really, really don't negate the first thing. You try to save it for the important plays. So onto the other spells, we have a uh, field spell, Cyframe Circuit. Now, this is the thing that lets you Synchro Summon on your opponent's turn. Synchro Summoning on your opponent's turn is extremely important because what you can find that will happen is that when you Special Summon, uh, your gear from your hand and the driver uh, all the gears say that during the end phase banish these cards so you banish your driver and your gear now if you're only running two vanillas uh, even three you find that if your opponent like just lets you like uh, negate and then passes you're going to banish your guys and if you don't have your your trap up or your synchro up to start returning guys to the graveyard and then recovering them, etc., etc., you're gonna find that you'll be running out of resources. And once you run out of the vanilla guy, you are pretty much game over from there. But anyway, uh, as we were saying, um, the field spell as well lets you uh, synchro on your turn and also has the, uh, this uh, honest mechanic. So when your opponent tries to attack during the battle phase, you can uh, boost your guy up to the same attack as a Cyframe that you have banished. Next is the trap card. It's called Cyframe Overload and it's probably one of the best spot removals in the game. You can banish this uh, along with something out of your opponent's field uh, every single turn during the player's turn of course because it's a trap and it gives your, prob uh, your opponent a lot of problems because if they're constantly having their combo pieces and stuff banished uh, it's gonna really start wearing them down and the idea is that you take advantage of this by recovering your banish fodder with things like path with things like the synchro monster and you've just pretty much slowly banished your opponent's entire hand and field moreover when this card's in the graveyard you can banish it and you can search out a cyframe card from your deck anything at all except itself however 
the next two spells, uh, I didn't include this one in the video, but we have Psychic Path and Psychic Fuel Zone. Now, a Fuel Zone lets you summon a Synchro by banishing the materials from your graveyard. Um, so you can banish the vanilla monster or another gear and you can special summon any psychic level 7 or 6 or 8 or 5 or whatever you may have on your extra deck. Pro probably just like 7 or 8 though. You're most likely going to be going into Omega and Zeta. And Path lets you recover for 800 life points, I think it is, two of your banished uh, psychic monsters. So all the fuel that you've been using to banish your opponent's uh, cards etc are essentially free because you get to get them back to your hand. It's important to note however is that these can make you brick really hard early games so I wouldn't want to play two of each because four dead cards in the deck as well as the vanillas you know that makes six seven dead cards in your hand you kind of don't want that at all but like we said at the beginning this deck can play duality card card etc and it takes advantage of this really well. So on to the boss monsters, we have Omega, and it's probably the most important extra deck monster. Um, he, is, uh, he is your boss monster. He's the one that lets you recycle your trapped graveyard effect every turn, which means you're pretty much getting searches off for free. Uh, and like all Cypher and Synchros, uh, it recycles itself into the deck. However, it's important to note that Omega says during your opponent's main phase. So a little mechanical thing here to note is that you will have a monster on your field when your opponent begins their turn, when you have Omega out. So the first action that your opponent does, because of priority, as you cannot just banish as soon as you enter main phase, your opponent has priority during that time to make an action, uh, they cannot have their first action negated because you still have a monster up. So you need to wait until they do something before you chain Omega to banish a card from your opponent's hand. Also, uh, when you banish himself and something from your opponent's hand, uh, they go back during your next standby phase. Now, Zeta is kind of similar, except he doesn't banish a card out of your opponent's hand. He banishes a special summon monster that your opponent controls and himself, however, during the standby phase. So Zeta lets you, in a way, deal with things that Omega can't. So if your opponent is smart, they'll make sure that the best card that they have going first is uh, the card that they, they activate first when you have an Omega. Um, Zeta, however, like I said, can be used in the standby phase, so you are free to negate anything they do as soon as they start their turn. So now, uh, onto the deck list quickly. Um, it's just something I sort of threw together, and you can of course change it as you see fit. Uh, as with all deck lists, you should use it as just a rough template, and then change everything as you see fit. So I'm playing two of the vanilla, because you don't want to clog it. Three card car, because you want to maximize the draw engine. Three uh, alphas, three betas, three deltas, three gammas. There's another side frame that I didn't mention called Epsilon. Epsilon negates trap cards. Because we're not in a particularly heavy trap format, I wouldn't recommend playing it in the main deck. If you are wanting to side it, however, you feel free. However, I feel that for trap cards, you kind of have better cards to deal with in your side deck. Uh, you might want to play things like Royal Decree if you want. Uh, MSTs are just as good. So you maybe want to main those. Uh, it's really all up to yourself. You can play Wind Up Rabbit. Of course, I would say two is a good number. You want to max out on your dualities. You want to max out on the upstarts. Make sure that you got as much consistency as possible because this deck can find itself breaking sort of hard with the paths, with the field zones too early. Some mirror forces for protection, a TT for a bit of a blowout. Uh, like we said, the deck can't particularly deal too well with established fields and one main macrocosmos because it really doesn't hurt you at all and it affects pretty much every single deck in the meta currently. I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, let me know what you think. And uh, This wraps up everything. Like I said, I hope everything makes sense. I hope the visual, visual aids were of use. I hope you have a better idea of how the deck works and how to play it. So feel free to comment, like, subscribe, leave me some suggestions where possible. Tell me what you think, pass the video on, and I'll see you around next time.